Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome back to my whiteboard. Selecting a centrifugal pump for a project is a pretty common task. From my experience with engineering firms in Alberta, the process engineer provides operating conditions, such as the flow rate and the pressure rise, and the net positive suction head available, and the fluid properties. Density and vapor pressure are the most important. This information is then passed to the mechanical engineer, who is the primary contact with equipment vendors. Ultimately, the equipment vendor has the final say on the pump. In my experience, there are usually some unique process requirements that makes every pump selection difficult. This requires rework of the process conditions to make the pump workable. I find it useful to do some additional process work up front to avoid surprises with the vendor recommendations. This video looks at making decisions that affect pump head. We will look at other design decisions in subsequent videos. We will look at an application where we are pumping 114 tons an hour of water, which is 500 US gallons per minute, with a pressure rise of 500 kPa. Impellers come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are flat and fling the fluid radially outwards, like a disc brake on a car, and some are very axial and push the fluid straight forwards, much like a boat propeller. The shape of the impeller is a key metric for pump performance. The shape is quantified by the specific speed. And this is the range of specific speeds for different types of impellers. Now the specific speed is a dimensionless ratio of pump speed, volumetric flow rate, and the pump head generated by the impeller. Well, it's not quite dimensionless. In North America, we tend to use US customary units of RPM, US gallons per minute, and the head in feet. Sorry. A specific speed of 500 is very flat and looks like the disc brake on a car. Whereas a pump with a specific speed of 10,000 or 15,000 is very axial and looks like a boat propeller. Now the specific speed uses the flow rate in RPM, the square root, pardon me, the specific speed uses the pump speed in RPM, the square root of the flow rate in US gallons per minute, and the head developed by each stage in the pump raised to the three-quarter power. Or we could say it's the total head generated by the pump divided by the number of stages, all raised to the three-quarter power. This means that specific speed is determined from our process conditions of flow rate and head, and our decisions on how fast the pump will run, the RPM, and the number of stages that we will have in the pump. So all we need to do is pick a speed and the number of pump stages that yields a workable pump. Now fortunately, we don't have to run through an infinite number of combinations and permutations to check this. There are constraints on the there are constraints on the specific speed, and they depend on the flow rate. This is a generic graph that correlates pump efficiency to specific speed where the flow rate is a parameter. This graph was first created by the Worthington Pump Company, uh, I believe back in the 1960s, or possibly the 1950s. And I assume that this graph is the product of years of observations where actual pump performance data was compressed onto one single very useful graph. Now this graph is designed to provide a good estimate for pump efficiency where we know the impeller geometry or the specific speed. The graph also gives us the range of feasible specific speeds for a given flow rate. In our example, we have a flow rate of 500 gallons per minute. 
This means the minimum specific speed that an impeller can have is 600. And the maximum specific speed that the impeller can have is 3000. So I took the endpoints of each of these parameter lines and plotted a map of minimum and maximum specific speeds as a function of flow rate. And I ended up with this graph, with the minimum specific speed for each for a given flow rate down here and the maximum specific speed up here. Now this map of specific maximum and minimum specific speed is all well and good, but how legitimate are these estimates for the constraints on the specific speed where we have a flow rate? These data are for a diverse set of pumps of all different shapes and sizes and applications. And here we can see that the data falls quite nicely between the minimum and maximum specific speeds from our simple map. So this means that these curves represent the minimum and maximum specific speed in real world conditions. Write a comment below if you have a pump where the specific speed falls outside these recommendations. As well, that old graph from Worthington predicts pump efficiencies that are often within two or three percent of the actual vendor data. And that's pretty good for a graph that's over 50 years old. All that we need to do now is select different combinations of pump speed and the number of stages and see where they fall on this map of specific speed and flow rate. I use Python for these calculations. You could use a spreadsheet. We will start with a 3600 RPM pump, which is a standard speed in North America. We see that a single stage is right smack in the middle of the acceptable range. Five or more stages is outside the range. In this case, I would select a single stage pump at 3600 RPM, and I'd be confident that it would be able to meet we'd be able to buy this pump and it would meet the pump head conditions. Next, we look at 1800 RPM. A single stage pump is below the minimum specific speed at this flow rate. It might be very difficult to find a single stage pump at 1800 RPM that satisfies our head requirement. I know of only one vendor that might be able to meet this head requirement with a single stage pump. A three or a five stage pump is much more likely to be found for this head requirement. Now unfortunately, a multi-stage pump is larger than a single stage pump. It takes up more plot space. Now this impacts the mechanical and civil and the piping disciplines because the equipment is bigger and we may need different pipe routing. Therefore, it is valuable to identify the feasibility of our pump before we approach vendors. If pump head were the only constraint that we needed to consider, then I would choose the 3600 RPM single stage pump. It is smaller and cheaper than the other options. The next option would be a multi-stage 1800 RPM pump but this will be more complex and more expensive and may have different design requirements. It would be prudent for me to check with the civil, mechanical, and piping disciplines to see if a multi-stage multi pump would impact their work. I would only choose a multi-stage 1800 RPM pump if something prevented the simpler 3600 RPM pump from being feasible. We will cover that topic in the next video. With an old graph of pump efficiency as a function of specific speed, we can determine which combinations of pump speed and pump stages are feasible. The accurate estimate of the pump efficiency is a bonus. Take care.